to begin plying, I put each little cone of singles into its own container. Now I'm using these deep jars, these large jars. This is a large dill pickle jar, and this one a sun tea jar. And um, I put them in there so that as I, the, I'm plying the two together, they won't jump out and become tangled with each other. And I'll put one of these on one side of me, the other one on the other side of me, and then I'll bring them together and put them onto the spindle and begin twisting them in the opposite direction they were spun to ply them together to make a two ply. I've seen people use a box and then take their cone, put a chopstick through it, and put it through holes in the box and let it unwind that way as they ply. Uh, one box for each, you know. And that works okay, but I've just found that it causes more tangling for me before it gets to me. More tangling down here before I get it up to the spindle. So I just prefer to use this method and I keep them far away from each other so that they don't tangle. So to prepare our spindle for plying, we're going to do the same thing that we did when we prepared our spindle to spin. We make sure our leader is attached, but this time, Instead of winding it on in a clockwise position, we're going to wind counterclockwise. Then bring it up through the notch, through the hook. We're going to open out our loop. I maybe have a little, little bit short there. We're going to open out our loop. <coughs> Move our singles away from each other so they're less likely to become tangled down below. Then we're going to bring our singles up through our loop and fold it over. Now this time when we spin, instead of spinning to the right, we're going to spin to the left counterclockwise and then allow that twist to move up into our singles. And you can see how that plies them together. So to ply on the spindle, bring your singles up on either side of you, one on each side. I like to put one behind me and one to the front. And then your main job is to feed these two down together without allowing kinks to enter the area of twist. Now instead of spinning from front to back as you did before, you're going to spin your spindle to the left or from back to front when you do it on your leg. So as like so. You can see that twist travel right up, and you're just going to feed the two down together and allow the twist to ply them together. When you get a full length, go ahead and wind them onto your spindle. And begin again. You're simply managing the two singles coming together and keeping them under a, an amount of tension so that they don't become all kinky between the in this area here where you're introducing twist. And don't worry if they do. Um, you know you're just uh, learning and we're just experimenting but that's your goal. That's what you're trying to accomplish. This is a much faster process, but it has its own set of challenges. It really needs to be both singles and the two together need to be kept under tension. So if you need to stop in the middle 
of plying, which my goodness, it would be hard to ply an entire skein all at one time. If you need to stop, you're going to need a place where you can put these, put this, and keep it under tension. One of the things I like to do is hang it on over a doorknob. So if you're doing it in a room, you can hang, hang it over the doorknob, close to the hook, and then pull your singles out far enough so that they're not tangling with it. And that'll hold it in place until the next time you get a chance to spindle. This to me is the funnest part. I love, love, love seeing the colors start to wind together. I love managing how much ply I put into my, how much twist I put into my ply. And what I normally do is try to keep a little more than a 45 degree angle, a little tighter than a 45 degree angle. And I'll show you up close. So what I'm looking for when I ply is a nice 45 degree angle between the two. So when I hold the plied yarn together, you can see that if I twist it more, it becomes tighter and tighter plied. If I twist it less, that angle between the two becomes smaller and smaller. I, as I said, I like to keep it right around a 45 degree angle. Right about there. Because you do lose some of this um, twist when you're finishing the yarn. When you're washing it and such, it tends to relax a little more. So I keep a nice, tight 45 degree, and I'm pretty happy with that. One of the problems you can run into when plying is that the yarn becomes so fat that it doesn't fit nicely in between your notch, in your notch anymore. Or it tends to pop out and then when you're spinning, when it comes out and you're spinning, it slides around the spindle as you go, which is annoying and difficult to handle. One of the things you can do if that happens to you is to bring your yarn up around the base of the hook and then wrap it around a couple times and that becomes a stop so that when you come up through the hook your yarn is resting against that and it won't slide around as you spin. Give that a try. I wanted to show you all these little twisties in the singles. So normal! Because your spun yarn, when it's loose and not under tension, is going to kink. So as you let out your singles to ply, you're going to pull those out, pull them straight. Before introducing your twist. The longer your singles rest before you do this, the less twisties they'll have. But the energy that's trapped in them isn't bad. It's just something to manage. You got this. You may find that some of these little twisties either get past you or they won't, you can't untwist them without breaking the yarn. You don't want to break in your singles and you don't want to do that. So just happily wind them into your yarn. If you wanted perfect yarn, you'd just buy it from the store. There's no shortage of that. Yours is more unique, rustic. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Ooh, it's looking beautiful. Hope you're enjoying the process. Another thing that helps 
as you're plying and your cop starts getting quite large and the yarn starts skipping past your stop, another thing that helps is instead of coming at it from a close angle like that, wind low and then come up to your stop at a much from a much lower angle. That helps. Well, as I'm getting closer to the bottom of my plying and my spindle's getting heavier, it's getting a little more unmanageable. I noticed that when I came to one area, my singles had broke. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to lay it over the other to overlap them and I'm going to continue plying with those two together. You'll notice now this is plied in and you'll notice that that area that was broken is plied with the one singles overlapping itself and you can't really even notice. Well, I finally decided that I needed to do something more on my spindle, so I cut a side off of one of those adhesive back furniture pads for the bottom of a chair leg and I'm adding it to my spindle as a stop. It's got adhesive already on it, so I'm just going to put it on this side. of my spindle and see if that will be better as a stop. As I wind my yarn on and bring it up, I do think that's going to do the trick. So it stops slipping. This cop is getting really big. So here is my finished plied singles. As you can see, when I came to the end of one, I still had some left on the other core. And that's pretty normal. It would be so rare that you would uh, have the same exact amount on each side. When you split them, you may have split one just a little thicker, one a little thinner, or there's the variation of how you uh, spin them as well. One may one side could have been a little thicker just in an area and makes for, you know, an uneven situation. So I'll just save these. I'll break it off here and I'll save this these singles to spin with another single sometime that it may perhaps I have left over. So I'll put that in my stash. And this, this beautiful big thing, big cop of y finished yarn, is ready for its final finishing. And I'll show you that next. And I must say, this stop of the little furniture pad, the adhesive furniture pad that goes on the bottom of chairs that I cut a little end off and, and put on my spindle, that was the best thing ever. I will always have that for, for plying on the, on the um, spindle. It's perfect. It kept my yarn from slipping and sliding around the spindle and making my um, spindle take a sudden drop. It worked great. So I recommend that. So let's finish our yarn, our beautiful spindle full of yarn.